Hi everybody and welcome to another piano review here on the Miriam Pianos YouTube channel. My name is Stu Harrison and in today's video we are going to be taking a look at Ritmuller's brand new RS160. This is a 5 foot 2 baby grand. It replaces the R9. It has quickly become a favorite here of ours at Miriam Pianos and I'm going to do some playing and talking about exactly what this instrument delivers, what you can expect when you find one yourself to sit down, hopefully just uh, help your research process along by adding yet another really cool baby grand model to your list of possibilities. If it's the first time you are seeing us here on YouTube, we would love for you to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so that you are aware every time we come out with a new video, which we usually do several times per week. So without further ado, let's dive right in with the Ritmuller RS160 right away. We recently did a video on the state of the Chinese piano industry. It was part of a mini series where we were covering all of the different piano producing regions of the world. And it was a really interesting look at that country because it is probably one of the most dynamic of any that's currently producing instruments. Uh, certainly in terms of its domestic market, it is the most robust. Uh, demand for Chinese instruments amongst Chinese households have only continued to go up, whereas most of the other rest of the world, uh, it's sort of in a slow transition from uh, mainstream uh, product into more of a boutique product. And that's been a slide that's really kind of been occurring for about 60 years in slow motion uh, with maybe some actual unit growth coming from the digital side. But in the Chinese domestic market, uh, things are going gangbusters. Uh, and there's also been some consolidation occurring in that market. There used to be dozens and dozens of piano factories, honestly not that dissimilar, uh, but maybe on a different scale, to what was happening at the turn of the century in the United States, late, teen, late 1800s into the early 1900s. Um, and so now we're seeing some maturing going on in that market and there are clear leaders emerging. We know that the High Loon uh, organization, for example, uh, has really gone out of their way uh, to connect with European designers, technicians, uh, really infusing that whole factory with a new level of expertise. The other uh, clear leader, and maybe even more so than High Loon, uh, because both on a scale and a quality standpoint, the Pearl River Piano Group uh, has for some time uh, been leading the way and by, by several measures. On a units per year basis, uh, they are leading, but they also uh, have some of the most well-known collaborations uh, occurring. They just recently, in the last few years, purchased Schimmel, uh, and I now see that both on the Kaiserberg and Rittmuller side, there are some uh, made in Germany instruments that are now coming out under the Pearl River uh, banners. Undoubtedly, those are occurring at the Schimmel factory, although they're not explicitly saying so. Just reading through the spec sheets makes you realize that the Rittmuller Supreme, which is really just a nine foot, um, it seems to be uh, basically a Schimmel uh, concert line, concert grand, in disguise. So lots of collaboration happening there. The Rittmuller line generally is the step up from the Pearl River line, and that is what uh, Pearl River is really pushing as the uh, kind of the alternative to the uh, Kauai and Yamaha Indonesian product. Uh, that that uh, continues to be brought out in both uh, grands and uprights. So these are um, recognizable by their RS, and I guess that stands for Rittmuller uh, Superior Line. Uh, there are three quality levels in the Rittmuller line, and this is the middle one. So it's the classic line, then it's the superior line, and then there is the um, premium line. Uh, so we're taking a look today at the Superior line. Now the RS160 replaced what used to be known as the R9. There was an R8, uh, which has now been replaced with the RS150. And there were several upgrades that Pearl River has introduced onto these instruments. We are now uh, looking at tapered soundboards. 
uh, which is a pretty significant upgrade. We're also looking at new hammers. This is the PR 2.0 uh, hammer that now makes it onto the um, RS-160. Um, there is an upgrade in the bridge design. There also seems to be an upgrade in the strings that they're using, this full Rosslow string. Uh, and just playing through the whole thing generally, it feels as though the cabinetry uh, has also um, just received an upgrade. There's more cabinet resonance uh, occurring on this instrument, generally speaking. Um, and I don't know how they do it, but Pearl River also does the sand cast plates. Anyway, let's play the RS-160 and then we're going to talk and break down uh, what the piano gives to us in terms of an overall playing experience. I'm just going to take you on a little bit of a tour of this instrument, both in terms of what it sounds like and what it feels like to me as the player. And I'm going to start in the bass as I usually do. Um, so the strings themselves and the way that the hammers are voiced out of the factory doesn't give a particularly brassy sound on that lower octave. Now in a piano of this size and this quality, sometimes that can be a blessing because when you get a lot of brassiness on an instrument of this size and they just don't have the budget to spend that much on bass strings, uh, you often get a lot of uncontrolled partials, so just really, really noisy bass and very metallic sound. So there's a, a virtual absence of any of that metallic uh, kind of shrill upper partials that you often get on these shorter uh, Asian-made instruments. Instead, you've got this quite round, uh, warm tone, really on the darker side and remarkably clear. Uh, even on that low A, which on shorter pianos, you really have to strain almost to hearing it with uh, immediate reference points in other ranges of the instrument to recognize that it's an A. 
but playing it on its own, it's really a very clear sound on the fundamental that you get. And so I think that has to be coming from really two things, which is uh, an improvement in the type or, or the quality of the bass string that they're putting on these instruments and the scale design. And let's continue up the range. So we've got that transition uh, that starts to occur uh, from, I guess that would be what, about C1 up to D2, E2, somewhere in that range. And I would say that the range of variation in tone isn't that wide, but the consistency of the tone through that range is a little all over the place. Some of that is a function of voicing, but again, a lot of that is also going to come down to just how choosy they can be with the bass strings that they're putting on this instrument. So it's really not, I'm not slagging them for it because what they've accomplished with an instrument like this for the price point is really quite impressive, but the price point has limitations in terms of just how discerning a manufacturer can be and how much time you can really put into bass string production. So you've got a little bit of variance through there. I wouldn't really say that it's particularly uh, you know, worse or better than anything else in this price range. I'm going to really say that that particular part is kind of average right down the middle. Whereas the lower octave I would say is well above average in terms of its performance. It's a pretty warm tone through the middle. It seems fairly clear to me that they're trying for a bit of an American voicing through this mid-range. To get anything uh, coming off like you know, the upper partials off that note, you'll really have to push the hammer to a point where you're almost at a distortion point. So it sort of feels like you've got a little bit of the top end of the note somewhat missing through this. But on the other hand, there's so much more to the lower portion of the note that is, is just often terrible or not even there. kind of in the, along the same lines as the lower octave that we were just talking about down here. Very consistent in the, in the uh, just in the sonic texture between this area and that area. Very blended tone uh, as well. We start to move up into the top register. There is a complexity and a depth to the treble on this instrument, which is really nicely balanced with the attack. And I do think that part of that is the plate and, and certainly the rest of that is, is a well-executed duplex.
Well, and also I'm sure regulating and making sure that the, the position of the, the hammer strike point uh, has really been uh, executed and planned properly. So scaling as well. That's really lovely. So, you know, it really is pianos like this that start to challenge the notion that just because a piano says that it's made in China, you automatically shouldn't be paying as much for it as something, say, from either Indonesia or certainly Japan, because that's, you know, undergirded by a pre-conclusion that the pianos can't be as good, therefore, there's no way I'm going to pay the same or more. But an instrument like this really challenges that notion, particularly sort of in that lower mid-range of price point. Because an instrument like the RS-160 is going to compete directly with a piano uh, such as the Yamaha GB1, which is their Indonesian instrument, or Kawai's uh, GL10 instrument. You know, or some of the Samic product uh, that they build under the Kanabi name, or their their uh, kind of their top tier name, the Siler line. And there's a maturity of the tone out of this instrument, uh, which I think in certain ranges comes out on the top of the heap of any of those instruments that I just mentioned. I also want to talk about the action um, because they have really taken a lot of weight out of the action. Now that doesn't mean that the static weight of the key is less to actually get the key in motion, um, but the return uh, speed and the lightness by which you can really move across the key at all different dynamic ranges is, is quite good. Um, another touch that they've added, I suppose pun intended, uh, is that they're using real ebony uh, tops for the black keys. Not only do I think that looks cool, it's kind of a nice touch for your fingers. Uh, the instruments are available in a variety of cover colors, uh, rather, like most of these grand pianos are from the manufacturers. Uh, the pedals are set to a really uh, nice uh, spring resistance. The pedals are slightly on the smaller side, um, both in terms of width and depth. And it also comes with a slow fall, which at this point is really becoming quite a standard feature. So my conclusions on an instrument like this is for one, anybody who is looking in that type of a price range where um, either I'd say up to a Yamaha GC1 or down into their GB1 range or Kawai GL10 or, or some of the other Indonesian makes, if that's kind of where you started your search uh, and you've received some advice from friend, teacher, technician that might be slightly out of date, uh, do not discount looking at some of the leading Chinese manufacturers uh, simply because of the country of origin. You do have now uh, several brands, uh, such as uh, the Rittmuller or their Kaiserberg above that, uh, that are putting out musically quite matured instruments. The scale design is really advanced. The quality of the bass string making has come a long way. Uh, they have brought uh, hammer manufacturing up to a point where it's really starting to rival uh, like sort of an entry-level European hammer. Uh, and the actions are coming feeling really nicely regulated uh, and premium materials throughout it. Uh, so point is, don't discount it. And if you have the ability to get into a showroom and try one, you might find yourself well rewarded for having done so. It does bring a slightly different 
tonal texture and depth to certain ranges within the instrument, which depending on your uh, playing repertoire, you may love. Anyway, thank you so much for checking out another instrument review here on the Miriam Pianos YouTube channel. My name is Stu Harrison. We have been in front of the Rootmuller RS160 Grand Piano. And if you enjoyed the review or would like to see more or want to stay up to date with all the videos we're always coming out with, please hit that subscribe button and notification bell because we'd love to see you leaving some comments, um, enjoying uh, more of our content, and certainly joining our community. We'd love to have you. Have yourselves a great day. Thanks so much. We'll see you soon.